Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. Now it's time for us to have our first conversation or our major conversation today with our guests. We're looking at the rise of gender-based violence. It's a conversation that we keep talking about and most recently we had one yesterday and another the day before. Today we're looking at ways to curb this the way out basically. Our guest today is an equality advocate and she's also a domestic violence counsellor. She is a Yali Fellow and she is the founder of Boundless Hands Africa, an initiative that has worked really hard when it comes to creating awareness on issues surrounding gender equality, violence against women, and child labor. Her name is Titila Yogubambi. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Welcome, Good evening. Titi. Good evening. So, Titi, you, you have an interest in advocacy, yeah. but that's not what your background in is in, right? Yeah. So, um, what, what, my background is sort of so, that. Something. So, what, what really piqued your interest in um, advocacy? Okay, I grew up in northern Nigeria, just precisely. So, as a girl in the north, there was already differences in, way, in ways we ladies were treated compared to a boy child. Okay. So there's a kind of respect that we're giving to the boys. There are some kind of chores that they were not allowed to, give, to do, which we were doing. And I picked up interest in knowing why will I be a girl and I'm washing plates and why can't my brother do the same thing? Mm. And then when I went um, further to maybe university and all, I realized that my friends that were girls that were my age were already put to be married at a very tender age. And some of them were dying from complications of giving birth and all. So it just became a passion in me to actually find out reasons why these things are happening and to find ways in stopping it. So, and when you decided to start up your uh, life as an advocate, how did people around you take it? For example, family, judging from the fact that you said you grew up in an environment where women weren't so appreciated, you know, how did they take it? How did people around you, family, friends, take it when you said, you know what, if he can't do it, why should I do it? Yeah. How did they take it? Uh, so basically, the first reaction from my friends are like, have you been violated before? Has somebody hit you before? That's what you get from people. It was um, a difficult thing because I started my career in the oil and gas. I was a procurement officer for like five years and I just realized that these things are happening. I have friends that have been married and are divorced, friends that have been beaten even when they were pregnant. Mm. So if I don't speak about it, who will? I won't keep waiting for it to get increased. Um, the statistics shows that in every three women, one one we face violence in her lifetime. So imagine if you have three daughters, one out of your daughter will face violence in her lifetime. Mm. Now, I, I, before we go into the meat of today's conversation, you mentioned you know, your background, you grew up and you saw this inequality, and you're a parent yourself now. How would you say that has shaped how you raise your kids? Mm. It has gone a long way. Um, for me, whether you're a male or a female, the only difference is the biological characteristics you have. So for my daughter and my son, they are the same. The only difference is because he has a male whatever and she has a female whatever. Every single thing the male child does, the female does. It's just like when we're growing up, there were some courses like engineering or like um, ICT that they will tell you because you are not, if you are not a male, you can't do it. If you look at the um, statistics in class, you have like 90% male in science class and 80% female. But I'll encourage my daughter to do what even males do and she will do it better. And then my boy child too. In the society, we see it as um, taboo for a male to cry, for a man to cry. Why mm. can't a man ex express his feeling like we women? So there are, those are the things I will bring up my child to do. As a boy child, why can't you do what your, your sister is doing? Why can't you both do the same thing? Okay, so um, in, in still on advocacy, um, in your years of experience as an advocate, I've learned something, speaking personally. Okay, so last year, we're lawyers here, last year, um, a lot of people who got first class from the Nigerian Law School, a great were women. Were, they were women. Exactly. A great percentage exactly. of them so were women. And they were doing great. Now, I had a lecturer who saw that and said, I'm very disappointed that the boys that went to law school in this year, they're a waste, waste of money. So they just sat down there and girls got first class. Imagine. What were they doing? How can women be having first class more than men? And this was 
a lawyer. This was the 20th century. This was a prof. Now, I'm saying, even with education, does it help with being an educated man for you to see a woman as a person and not just a property? Of course, ed education goes a long way in okay. helping men see women. Okay, like um, my organization has a project called Men for Equality. We realize that we have social cultures, norms in our society that makes a woman a subordinate to a man. But I feel with education, with advocacy, with sensitization, things like this can stop. And then what we preach in Men for Equality is that you as a man should partner to empower a woman. So you don't see yourself like a superior to a woman. You see yourself as a partner. So when you were talking about um, marriage and all, there's no head in a marriage. I know uh, the religious aspect of it. Yes, the man is a leader, the man is a head, the man is the king. But in marriage, it has to do with partnership. So when men start seeing women as their partners in whatever they want to do in the world today, I think it will go a long way. Would you find yourself a feminist? Um, I, I prefer an advocate. Okay. Now, because, you... let me explain why. Okay. Because a lot of people that call themselves feminists, they don't even understand what gender equality is all about. Gender equality just means we as women want to have equal opportunities with men. If a male child is allowed to go to school, I want to go to school because mm -hmm. I'm a girl. If a male in my organization is being paid 200,000, why am I not being paid the same thing? Why can't I qualify for a job role? Why do you want a male for that job role? That's just what it is. So if I'm a feminist and I'm shouting a feminist and you don't really know what you're talking about, then. So you think that there are people who are probably taking it a little too far? Of or? course. Okay. So um, now let's go into the bit of today's conversation. We've been mm -hmm. having lots of people there speaking up a lot more about gender-based violence. We know that we, we have a time in the year, I think it's between November 25th up until the 10th yeah. of December, we have 16 days of activism Advocate, for gender-based yeah, violence. Yeah. But we find that women are always the ones who suffer this more. Why is this the case? So, um, I don't know if you've seen that a couple of males who are facing the um, violence generally, but obviously the statistics is still the women face more. Um, with Nigeria, particularly, women have not been empowered for a long time. And as a woman that is not empowered, you're at a risk of facing violence. Because um, the cycle of violence starts with, you know, the tension phase. The tension phase, the guy starts to intimidate you, he starts to put you down, he starts to talk to you, and then there's the explosion stage. Once there's a tension, it will definitely explode. And once the, once the explosion happens, the violence occurs and all, there is a honeymoon stage. And the honeymoon stage is the stage whereby he comes to beg you, he comes to buy you gifts. And so imagine you as a, as a woman, a guy violated you, physically abused you, battered you, and then you have a job, you are empowered. Will he buy you a gift and then you go back to him? Well, maybe depending on if you're suffering from Stockholm Syndrome, you've gotten so used to being yeah. abused <laughs> that, you know, we've, we've seen people who end up making excuses for the yeah. abuser because mm. they're now imprisoned exactly, in their minds. Exactly. So what I'm saying is that once women are more empowered, it, it can actually help reduce. Because most cases that we handle, we find out that the woman is saying because of her kids, how will she take care of her kids? She has to remain in that a situation for a while, what will family say? The Nigerian environment is not even helping us with that situation. What would family say? You run to your parents and they tell you, go back to your husband's house. You have to be there because you are married. Marriage is forever. You find churches telling you there's nothing like divorce. Divorce is not allowed in churches. So those are the kind of things that we are, we are sensitizing people about. Those are the kind of things that can prevent domestic violence. Um, my organization also does um, sensitization in secondary school because we found out that there's a circle. So if you, in secondary school, junior secondary school, senior secondary school, are aware that this kind of things happen, you're already aware, you settle your mind, you know what to do in case it happens, and then when you, be you become a young girl like us in this society, you can avoid some situations. Okay, I'm happy you actually mentioned um, religious background to this and also place of family. 
So today on the radio show, actually, we're talking about children and anger tantrums. And we had a certain nine-year-old who called on the show mm -hmm. and said he gets angry the way he does because that's how his dad behaves. Exactly. So now I'm, I'm saying in the place of family, what are the things that you, like we as a people and a society should do, especially concerning the male child? Because it's more like how they see you behave as a man, as a husband, yeah. as a father, Actually, is so. what they're like, okay, it's right, so let's do it. What are the things that should be done when it comes to family upbringing socialization? Okay, hmm. there are lots that has to be done, especially in our environment today. Um, if you're in a family and you find out that your parents are arguing every day, there's just tension in the home and all that, you grow up to think that that is how you should behave as a man. So for me, I feel we parents have loads of work to do. There's no marriage like there's no argument or there's no tension, but the way you handle it tells a lot about your child. We find out in schools, we find out children saying, my daddy is always shouting on my mommy. I don't know what, I think my daddy is not a good man. So imagine a boy that already has that idea about his father. How will he grow up to be? And another thing is that it's not even the nuclear family alone. In your streets, in your environment, have you found a, guy, a boy that is always playing, always happy, and he's isolated, he's sad? What have you done as a neighbor? What have you done as an auntie? What have you done as a sister to find out what is going on with this guy? That is what we call community policing. We have to be policies to ourselves. Brilliant. Now there's something else. What are some of the telltale signs to look out for? You know, we see a lot of people getting into abusive relationships and it happens over and over again. So what are some of the signs one should look out for in a partner to know that this, you know, this is a red flag I need to run? Yeah, I feel um, when somebody is very aggressive, aggression turns to something else, it grows. So if you find out that somebody is very aggressive, um, it might be, there are some people that even have mental illness, not mad. Some people actually have some kind of issues that they need to deal with and they need to treat. So you as a person, maybe the boyfriend or the girlfriend, you can even go out of your way to take that person to maybe the hospital or to talk to that person to find some people are dealing with things and then they just take it out on you and all that and apart from that um i feel we can also look at um people's um family background very important you know where they're coming from you don't mm -hmm. expect somebody that lived in a place that everybody's shouting everybody's fighting and everybody and is behaving like that so I'm not yeah, basically saying, people are a, a function of where they come from. Yes. Although we can unlearn these harmful ha yes. habits. And most of them, all they need is just help. Okay. All they need is At help. what point does it become dangerous? Because a lot of the time when we talk about violence, gender-based violence, we often focus on physical violence. So they ask me, is he hitting you? And if he's not hitting you, stay there. We don't really spend as much time to talking about verbal, psychological abuse. Yeah, we look at the sure. external. That's so, sure. exactly. So, tell yeah. us, lead us through the different kinds of abuse that there are. Okay, so we have um, the verbal abuse. You know, somebody is always talking, talking on you down. Somebody is always abusing you. Somebody is always using very harsh words on you. That's the verbal abuse. Then we have the physical abuse. Somebody is raising hands on you, hitting you, and all that. And we have the mental abuse. You know, we have mental abuse. Maybe people that are using drugs, very harsh drugs, and mm. all. Then we have um, the... I, I know there's also um, financial abuse, so there are people who manipulate yeah. their other half because yes. maybe they're the one who has the access yes, to the money. Yes, they keep money from mm, you, exactly. they don't provide what you really need as a woman, and then, you know, that's, that's the form of abuse. And they will still actually prefer you not working for it. Yes. Because I know people who are in that situation yeah. Okay, too. so when somebody, sexual abuse is a very key yeah. one Yeah, and as another, well. I really want to talk about sexual abuse. In this part of the world, we don't see rape as something that is very very bad it's starting to change though yes it's starting to change but you know what rape means i'm not giving you consent for my body so you hear teenagers say uh, i didn't i didn't allow him but he begged so once a no is a no once a lady tells you a no you don't even pe pester her to change her mind in the west you know what's happened to people like r kelly and all that so those are the kind of things we need to keep sensitizing our environment about. People that are reported for rape, they are not even being punished. Then our society, people are not even speaking up. 
because they feel that they'll get stigmatized. Which is why we must applaud the few that have come out to speak up. Of Recently, course. we've been seeing the Arawa Me Too movement that has taken, you know, caught on fire on Twitter. Lots of Northern women coming out to share their, men and women actually, sharing yeah. out this, sharing their stories yeah. of abuse. And we need to also be a society that, that doesn't victim shame. So we see a lot of exactly. shaming of the victim usually, but that is starting to change. We are not yet there. Yeah, that's why a lot of people don't talk because they will say, what will my family say? What will my friends say? How will I fit him back to the society? Mm. So, like, there's a home in Surulere where we do one of our pet projects. It's a home that houses um, girl, ch girl children that have been physically abused, molested. It's a government-run home. But some of those girls have been raped maybe eight or ten years ago, and they've not healed. Mm. So what we do now, okay, yes, the government is putting them in school and all that, but they've not healed emotionally. So what we do is that we give them therapeutic, you know, things that will help them to even heal from there and see themselves that, yes, I can fit back into the society and I can achieve what other people are achieving. Okay. So somebody watching this has been sexually abused or, you know, face some sort of domestic abuse and they need help. They don't know where to go. They need to contact your organization or something. How do they go about it? Oh, well, the first thing, we have a website. Our website is www.boundlesshandsafrica, boundless hand without an S, africa.org. All you do is to go there. There's a, um, there's a portal for you to report the cases. If it's a very urgent case, we have um, contact with the police. The police will immediately isolate you from wherever you are, and we take it from there. And I think it's also important for us to mention that in cases of rape, the first thing you want to do is to have your bad, but please don't, you know, because we exactly. need evidence. The yes, police, we need yes, evidence yes. to work with. Get so if you've checked. been raped, the first thing you want, you feel like doing is having your bath. Please, please don't. don't clean do not up, have yes. your bath. Make a report at the police station yeah. and then make a report at the general hospital, hospital. a government yeah. hospital, yeah. so that they can use the rape kit and do a yes, check. And so really, check thank you so much for what your organization thank does. We're great. Well. With more organizations like yours, we can spread the word out there and yeah. reduce the incidents. We're seeing the Me Too movement catching fire, you know, in the Western community. And it's coming to Nigeria as well. We need to do more. We need to speak up more. Yeah. And I know that your organization is also having an event, event. a free yeah. event for yeah. people to yeah. attend. Yeah. So. We have an event for the International Women's Day, which is on the 8th of um, March 2019. What's it 2019. about? Okay, so it's, um, you know, the International Day is a day of, for women to celebrate their selves, celebrate their successes. But we just feel like, okay, we have women at the peak of their careers in the society. And then we have young females between ages of 18 and 35 that are striving to be something. They are so, you know, social media, they're selling things. They're mm. There's so much pressure. Yes, there's so much pressure. They're, they're coming up. They're you know so what we're doing is that we are bringing these um, girls together and we are bringing people at the peak of their careers to come and inspire them and motivate them and at the end of the day we also attach them to mentors that will help them you know direct them in the right direction Fantastic. so the event will be a, a big a big one for every female in lagos it's going to take about 30 people we have a link on our website www boundlesshandafrica.org just click and register it's a free event and um, there's going to be lunch there's going to mm, be a lot I like that part. okay another thing we are doing that day is that there's a pitch contest okay so we have we are we told people to apply on our website for that pitch contest there's going to be a seed funding i don't want to say the price but it's a big amount of money that you can win so all we need you to do is to tell us the idea you have your business idea you have in about a few lines, okay. and then if it's something that is sustainable, they'll give you a seed funding to start your business. Brilliant. So these are ways we can yeah. empower women. Yeah. So like you mentioned, a lot of people are staying in abusive relationships exactly. because they're not empowered. Exactly. But you're empowering them and giving them the opportunity exactly. to start their business. So yeah. thank you so much. And for the event doing. is sponsored by IHS in partnership with Boundless Hands Africa, IHS. Your non-governmental organization. Yes. So let's thank talk about, where is it happening? Um, um, it's at Four Points. Okay, Four points right. by Sheraton all right. on the 8th of March by 9 a.m. It's a day before election, so all right. we're going to start early and end early. So because we, we were very passionate about improving and giving back to our viewers as much as possible, you know, this is something that we think if you want to sell your, if you need a business, please visit the website and um, get your seed funding as much as you can. To enjoy more of this, our will get videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.